Hi everybody. It's a snowy, cold winter day here in Ithaca, and I thought I would take advantage of being stuck indoors to record a couple of comments about the new ISIS-2 platform, which you can download from our website and use to build high assurance distributed computing systems. Here at Cornell, we've had about 30 years of experience in building fault tolerant, uh, attack tolerant, secure applications that can automatically re react to reconfiguration events and other types of, of uh, mishaps and still maintain consistent, correct, rapid response behavior on distributed systems. And as the cloud has emerged in the last couple of years, uh, we've migrated some of these ideas to the cloud. So ISIS-2 is a new programming library intended to make it easy for developers to leverage cutting-edge solutions in these areas and build cloud computing solutions that have the kinds of high assurance attributes I just outlined. The sorts of settings we're targeting with ISIS-2 are things like control of the smart electric power grid, where we might wish to use a cloud-hosted application to monitor vast numbers of sensor points, do some sort of computation on the cloud to detect a condition that requires a response and then reach back out to the applications that control the power grid and reconfigure it in any of a variety of ways. There are a lot of ideas out there for doing that. Our view is that they require a cloud scale story, but it has to be a high assurance story. And that's where ISIS-2 enters the picture. Similarly, for high assurance medical computing applications that might monitor large numbers of patients and in some way take actions that could affect those patients' health and where we need a guarantee that we're doing things correctly and that failures or other types of problems won't disrupt correct behavior. Uh, financial applications may need such things. I think many would. Control of large uh, process infrastructures such as factories and uh, transportation infrastructure. So we, we see a wide range of applications emerging in which high assurance is required. What ISIS-2 does is it packages up what we consider to be best of breed solutions in this space into an easily used programming library that tries to mimic the style of programming that you use when creating today's uh, GUI interfaces. So in a GUI interface, if you've got, a, for example, a mouse click action that you'd like to support, you attach a, a menu to your application and then when it's clicked, a procedure is called. Well, ISIS works in the same way. The model here is focused on data replication and processing replication within what we call process groups. And we use a formal model as well. I'll say a word about that in a moment. But the basic programming style is very much the same as with mouse clicks. When events occur, we do an up call to the appropriate user-defined procedure. It's very, very simple and clean. You can literally build fault tolerant high assurance applications that do data replication and sophisticated distributed search in a few tens of lines of code. All right. so, so something which would traditionally seem like a nightmarishly hard problem, because it is hard, let me just emphasize that running on today's cloud computing infrastructures is not an easy thing. We've moved as much of that as possible into our library so that you as a user get the easiest possible user experience and still can do sophisticated distributed processing. Uh, you can do data replication, and you can have guarantees of consistency, uh, security, fault tolerance, and other sorts of properties you might need in order to achieve the sorts of rapidly responsive behaviors that your application needs. There's a manual available for download from this website. I'd encourage you to look at it. You'll see that today you can use ISIS primarily from C Sharp, but it works on both Windows and Linux. Uh, we've already got support for Iron Python that's going to be documented in the manual early in 2012. And we're going to be adding documentation for C++, Java, and other programming languages over the course of the next year. The system itself is open source. We'll be providing support from here at Cornell. Uh, in fact, my group is eager to work with people who have hard problems and aren't quite sure how to cast them into this ISIS motif. And we also have a, a, a new version of my textbook coming out through Springer Verlag. Uh, so if you'd like a more uh, academic treatment of this entire space, you'd like to look at options other than ISIS, I try to be fair and cover everything in sight. Um, so uh, ISIS-2, in some sense for us, is our uh, packaging of the best solutions, but that's certainly not the only ones we're aware of. And the textbook would cover all sorts of other kinds of technologies that you might want to use in a highly assured cloud computing application today. So that's the general picture. 
Uh, as I said, I don't want to get very technically detailed. If I did, I'd have to tell you a little bit about our programming model, which is a new fusion of Leslie Lamport's uh, model. He uses it with Paxos. It's called State Machine Replication. And the old ISIS model, which was called Virtual Synchrony. But uh, instead, I'll uh, leave that for people who are interested to look up either in the textbook, it's in an appendix, or uh, in a paper that's on our website. In fact, you'll find quite a few papers on our websites about the techniques used in ISIS. Um, and you'll also find papers about how these kinds of systems deal with uh, famous theoretical impossibility results, such as the FLP result, impossibility of uh, fault tolerant consensus, or the uh, more recent uh, CAP result, the impossibility of achieving consistency, availability, and partition tolerance simultaneously in a single application, forcing trade offs. And you'll see that, that ISIS uh, is in a sweet spot. It's able to, uh, it can't evade FLP, nobody really can, but we can guarantee uh, that the FLP scenarios that can prevent fault tolerance systems from making progress are of extremely low probability. So much so that even at the scale of a cloud computing system that might run on hundreds of thousands of nodes, FLP would not be an obstacle. And similarly for CAP, uh, we've discovered that there are many situations in which you really can't have consistency and still have rapid response. Uh, and that uh, Eric Brewer's theorem is a valid theorem, but it doesn't cover some of the configurations and use cases that we focused on. So ISIS uh, is in a good spot, uh, and if you'd like to work with the system, you're going to find it a very easy tool to develop with. We're available to help you on that. Uh, send us an email, call me up, Skype. I am more than happy to work with people who are finding challenges here. I will debug and fix problems in the system, uh, and I'm looking forward to doing that. I enjoy it, actually. And for individuals who might have research challenges that go beyond what we can solve with ISIS-2 today, we're tackling those kinds of questions as our research challenges. Uh, so for example, today people uh, do what's called sharding of replicated data in the cloud. What's the very best way to shard data, and does ISIS-2 support that? I don't know the answer to that right this minute. I have a research uh, project underway with one of my students to try to answer that question. It will eventually either turn out that we tune up some part of ISIS and explain how to use it as part of our work, or perhaps we'll even develop a new module within ISIS specifically for data sharding for people who would like to do whatever we conclude is the best that we can figure out. And, uh, and that will package sharded data in a way that's just as easy to use, hopefully, as everything else within the system. And that's typical of the way we're approaching things. So people come to us with questions, contemporary questions. Some of them we've got answers for, and the ones we don't become our, uh, our next set of research papers. You'll find quite a few papers on our website, probably far more than you would ever want to read. And uh, as I said, I'm more than happy to answer your emails or take calls. Here at Cornell, uh, I've got to say, we have a fantastic research group in this area. My colleagues are great, and uh, quite a few of them at this point. So uh, no matter what problems you're looking at in the cloud computing area, feel free to give us a call or knock on our doors. And uh, whether it's me or my colleague, Johannes Gerka, Ben Sirer, Nate Foster, in fact, I should probably be fair and list talking. Weatherspoon, Robert Van Renesse, Fred Schneider, Andrew Myers, Raphael Pass. We have a ton of great people working on questions in this area, and we would love to have collaborators who are working on really tough problems that need these kinds of solutions. So it's been a pleasure, and I hope to hear from you soon.